On this episode of the podcast, we talk about how to leverage relationships in order to co-create. We also talk about the secret to justifying gear purchases and even how to justify getting your own production studio. Just don't let your significant other listen to this episode. And finally, on this episode, learn some pro tips on the most efficient ways to market your video business What's up, friends? I'm Ryan Core from Studio Sherpas, and this is the Grow Your Video Business Podcast, the show for corporate and commercial filmmakers that are wanting to build a business without burning out. On this show, we cover topics like sales, marketing, operations, mindset, da-da, da-da, <laughs> all of the things to really help you kind of go to the next level. And when, when I talk about growing your video business, I'm not I'm not saying like, you know, become this like, you know, massive, like tons of employees making tons of money and although tons of money is great but like massive employees can be a, a massive headache uh, unless that's what you really want uh, but really when I talk about growing it's like learning applying the things that you're learning becoming more efficient at what you're doing because the more efficient that you become in this process of shooting editing producing uh, sales marketing all of those things the more efficient you become the more money you make per hour and uh, the less you have to work. Uh, so uh, if you could work 20 hours a week and make the same amount of money, wouldn't you rather do that? Uh, unless you're obviously not making enough money. But stick around because this show, uh, I really share with you the things that I've learned over the last 17 years on what has worked and what hasn't worked in my own video production business. So I'm super happy that you are here today. This was a really fun conversation conversation with my friend Jeff C. Uh, we talked about uh, really some creative ways for you to be able to make money in your video business with stuff that you already have and things that you already know. Before we dive in, if you haven't yet taken advantage of my free workshop on how to earn six figures consistently in your commercial filmmaking business, I want you to hop on this. I go over, in this, in this workshop, I go over the key things that have helped me build my video production business. Uh, I, I cover the three must-have components for marketing to your dream client. I share my secret on how I get my clients to pay me way more than my competition. And I share how you can build your own automated lead machine to help you fill your funnel. If you're at all interested in creating a business that is sustainable, that has some predictable income, uh, even if you've only got 30 minutes a day to work on your business, I'm gonna show you the things that you should be working on so that you can have the business that you really, really desire. You can get access to this action-packed workshop today. It is my gift to you, and you can unlock it if you go to studiosherpas.com slash workshop. Now, let's get into this episode with Jeff C. What's up, friends? Hey, welcome to this episode of the show. Today, I am with Mr. Jeff C. If you can see him, you'd see that he has an epic beard uh, he is an international speaker, as am I. <laughs> this is a great time to like share my own accolades as I'm like talking up my guests. Uh, he's also host and producer of the podcast and live show for Social Media News Live, and he is the producer uh, of the podcast for Guy Kawasaki's Remarkable People podcast. Jeff and I go way back to like three weeks ago at Social Media Week, Lima. Uh, we became fast friends, and look at us now. Jeff, I'm so happy that you are here on the show today. Yeah, I don't know how. The, I mean, I just clicked this link, and this happened, so <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Where I mean, am I? just I? met you. This could be a trap. <laughs> this could be a trap. And I beat you. I, I got you on my show. I thought I was going to be on your show That's before right. I was going to be on. Well, we've got some things planned. Yes. Yeah. So what's so fun uh, in the last like three weeks since Social Media Week Lima uh, and just a little bit before that, you know, I've I've got like probably the, my busiest schedule with like vacations and some work stuff uh, that I, I just keep running out of my podcast queue and I keep reaching out to people texting like, hey, uh, are you doing anything today? Can you help me out? I need some, some help. And so thank you for rescuing me, Jeff. You're the best, man. Yeah, no problem. I wasn't doing anything anyway. I mean, it's you know, like, 
And you yeah, come right, on vacation. Like, I got just my ask me show, I got this today. I got, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I'll yeah. see if I can squeeze you in. Yeah, so yeah. I, I really do appreciate it. Jeff, tell me, g- give us a little glimpse of what, what does it look like to be, uh, I mean, you're, you're producing a couple of shows and uh, you are, you know, you're on international stages. You're you're on the stage with me. You've you've got a pretty, from my perspective, a pretty packed schedule of things that you're doing. Uh, what right now, like, what's bringing you the most life out of all the things that you're doing? Um, so, well, we just talked about it. The, the fun thing that I'm having right now is I'm playing a lot with Amazon live. Uh, so, um, if you guys aren't familiar with that, I, I, I do a lot of live video. And so I've been doing Amazon live for quite a bit and to be on that platform, you have to be an influencer. Well, I was one and I just didn't know all this extra <laughs> stuff that you could do. And so I went to this conference in Florida and then, you know, we talked about it at social week, week, week Lima with some of the guys from dealcasters were there who, uh, that's kind of their their big thing that they talk yeah. about, and um, I just started jumping into you know making videos specifically for that platform, and it's kind of taken off. So I'm like, that's what I've <laughs> I've been doing. It's it's just bonkers because you know I played around with YouTube, and I just I just am I I do video for so many. I use I cut my teeth on video. That's what I did it yeah. from the very very beginning in the churches, and then it grew to a business and all that kind of stuff, and then it's just hard to do YouTube for me because I you know live video it's easy. It goes there. I like it. Um, but this is like kind of fun. I'm kind of having fun making these product videos and I don't feel like I'm, you know, I'm not the sham wow guy, you know, it's like, Hey, <laughs> sham wow, or <laughs> set it and forget it. You know, I don't have to worry about that. Um, it's, but it's fun to talk about this stuff and it, and it's performing really, really, really well. And I'm actually making money and I've never done that on really YouTube before. So it's, <laughs> it's like, pretty fun. I've never done that before. I've never yeah. made money. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, I never have uploaded a video and the next day turned around and I made money off of it on yeah. YouTube. But I have on Amazon, and I'm like, what? So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm playing with this model for a while. That's fun. So let's let's rewind. Uh, you started in video. Uh, what kind of stuff were you doing? And then how did things transition? Like, uh, I, I'm assuming at some point you kind of became uh, mo- most of your money comes from uh, producing shows. Is that is that right? Yeah, and consulting and stuff like that from okay from, for with other companies and sponsorships and all sorts of stuff. Um, so for me, it started like. I, I did computers back in college because I wanted to play video games. And, and back then, I'm, you can't see, but I'm a gray beard, so I've been around, I'm old. Um, but I had to fix computers to, you know, because it was DOS and, like, to play, like, oh Wolfenstein gosh. 3D in my dorm. I had to, like, do this stuff on the computer. So I got into computers. And then um, it just happened to, I started, like, a web design company back in the day with Flash. Web, remember Flash websites, the animations? Oh, yeah. oh that Absolutely. was me. You can thank me for that. So, thank and Shockwave you. and all that stuff. So I was doing that. I worked for a company for a while, and then I started my own and been doing that kind of ever since. Um, and I got bored with the website stuff because it started to get really hard to make money because uh, you got everybody in their, you know, their kid building websites. Right. And so I did um, – start, I started doing social media. I'm like, I better, I'm telling my clients to do it. I better start doing it. And I wrote an article because um, I heard this podcast about – you know, Pinterest can make, you know, drive all this traffic. And I had a new blog, so I tried it and it worked. And I wrote this article called Manly Pinterest Tips Number One. And it was about how I shared a secret board with my little daughter with recipes and stuff. And, and it went viral. And then I started doing live shows back in the day on Google Plus. That's how old folks, yes, Google Plus uh, hangouts on air and got to interview some amazing people. That's where I met Guy Kawasaki. Uh, I got to interview like the producer of Pretty Woman and Under Siege and all these people. It's like the Wild West of live video. And so that just continued to open doors. I worked for Social Media Examiner. I mean, they were one of my biggest clients for yeah. probably five or six years. And then it just kind of morphed into what I'm doing now. Mm. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I remember I read Guy's book. Uh, it was early on in my like business career when mm-hmm. I started reading like, you know, business He's written like 12, and- yeah. Yeah, right. I'm like right behind you, dude. Uh, DOS 3.0, DOS 3.1. Wait, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm, I'm thinking Windows. Windows 3.0, Windows 3.1. Uh, DOS was just DOS. There, was there different versions of MS DOS? MS DOS is, I don't think, I don't know. But I mean. Yeah, it was just like, just I, I think we talked about this at the conference. Like, I remember like Premiere 2, like with a <laughs> unicorn on the box. When you had boxes, what software would come for in. And, right. And I remember getting a monster hard drive for video and it was like three and 380 megs and i'm like yeah i can edit a movie you know <laughs> and it took up like four bays in my full tower i mean it was yeah so but you know i learned a ton 
So, anyway. Oh, man. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, man. So good. You can, like, play that on your phone now. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, our audience filled with corporate commercial filmmakers, some people just starting out and really wanting to do this full time, and other people who have been doing it for a really long time and have built very successful studios and are doing incredible stuff all over the world. Um, what opportunities do you see in the world that you're in uh, for producers, for for film video producers uh people wanting to work you know with businesses serve clients like that um what what things are you seeing that we might not be seeing okay so so the first thing i kind of touched on it with amazon amazon shopping stuff but live shopping is starting to become really really huge now it's huge over in asia it's already like there's these all they do these people who shop or talk about products and they're multi-millionaires and they're celebrities and all this stuff it's starting to come to uh, America brands and, you know, agencies are starting to notice and like, okay, we could do this model too. So, uh, you know, Amazon live, it's like the biggest mall in the world. So getting on there um, and uh, it's going to become more and more, I have a feeling uh, produced where there's, I'm Mm. you know, you're probably getting hired and I've been hired to remote produce live events. Uh, And so live shopping is going to be produced as well. So I think right now that's a huge area that a lot of filmmakers and video people can can kind of move into because uh, a lot of their skills will translate to that. So Amazon Live's huge. Um, Targ- I mean, uh, Walmart's coming out with one. I mean, it's just right, ready to launch, I think. Uh, and Target's been rumored to do one as well. I have a feeling that Best Buy will probably get into it if they're not gobbled up by somebody else. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for this r- remote producing. And I got into the live video and the remote producing stuff because I got tired of lugging gear everywhere. <laughs> I just got, mm, you know, yeah, hey, you can yeah. set up your background and get the lighting and all stuff. Right. And being able to remote produce is kind of fun. If you got the bandwidth and you can do stuff, you can do a really slick show, but they still need all your skills. You know, right. you just don't have to go there and, you know, mess with lighting and junk. Can, can you describe, like, what, what that – what? All I'm picturing is like home shopping network, right? You know, but live with like a chat feature or something like that. <laughs> there's so, and the cool thing is, there's a lot of other platforms that are starting to develop. So, um, you know, Amazon is in its rudimentary forms right now. But for my show, like for the show that I do, when I just talk about social media news and business stuff, and you know, today we talked about how to find brand deals. Um, I go ahead and push that to Amazon because they're they're wanting content, and I make sales. I mean, I'm not killing it but i'm making sales every day when i go live over there so there's those platforms a lot of brands uh right there's some other brands right now and i have some friends who are doing this that they don't want to be on amazon because they want the all the money pretty much so there's these third-party tools that people are using now um like oh um i i if you wouldn't ask me i could give you a list but there's like three or four big ones that allow companies to pl- pay. It's almost like almost like a Kajabi or something, but it's for live shows, like shopping shows. You're gonna have a fashion show, or you're gonna, you know, they want to sell a bunch of their products that you can use a third party tool to do that. Like, um, oh, it's kind of like the people at Streamyard, but the the owner who does events, the one that they got bought by Streamyard. Anyway, um, but yeah, there's a couple of them that do that. So that's another thing, and you have more control over that than like say just going live to Amazon. So you can you can have a coupons that come up on screen. You can you okay. have a little bit more editing uh, powers in those. So like with your show, you're saying like your show isn't your your show isn't about Amazon. Your show you're talking about social media. It's really good content yeah. that they can push to their to their audience right. of shoppers or yeah. whatever. But like on your sidebar, I watched I actually watched a little bit of the episode that you're talking about today. Mm. On the sidebar or whatever, you've got your high OPR forty microphone, right. like some of the gear that you're either talking mm-hmm. about or using uh would be referenced on the page somewhere. Is that is that kind of yeah. like what that Yeah, that's what that that's what I'm doing and I'm not is like and I'm yeah and people go there and there's people interacting today and I probably had a thousand people watch um over on Amazon Live, which is just blows my mind. Um Jeez. You could take this show, like we're doing right now. We're, we're actually yeah. recording this, but it's camera. But you could push it over to Amazon, and you could make sales and stuff. And uh, the ones that are really killing it over there, they're really making it shopping base. Like, they'll do, like, hey, we're talking tech today. We're going to be talking all about these microphones. We're going to review them live on air. Here's mm-hmm. what the Heil sounds like. Here's what the Sure sounds like. Um, yeah. You know, and then they can answer questions from the audience. It's very interactive. So um, those skills for you know, are, are, are really valuable. Like remote production is just growing by leaps and bounds. I feel like for so many, 
for people who have been doing video production for more than a couple of years, you know, when the pandemic happened, that's where a lot of us, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, Black Magic and yeah. all these companies started selling out of all of their, uh, you know, live streaming. You couldn't find a web camera we, anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Like just just a regular right. uh, Logitech C920 yeah. or whatever right. it is. Uh, impossible to find. So I think a lot of us that hadn't tried uh, or done, you know, much any live streaming, I think it really opened our eyes to say like, wow, uh, and it's still a thing, yeah. you know, right now, even just, even just for events, there are a lot of like hybrid type events or people still just going straight up virtual because they're like, they save a lot of money. They can reach a lot more people. Mm -hmm. Just there's a lot more flexibility. Um, although I still don't think that they're nearly as good as, you know, in-person stuff, right. but that's just, you know, yeah, I think there's going to be a, a spot for both of them because, like you said, I think I think hybrid events are going to happen. I think they'll have like the live event because um, I just I've been editing also a podcast for Bizabo, which is a event place, and they also do live shopping inside of there. And um, one of the things that they they do is they they talk about you know it's you can't beat being in person and having those hallway encounters. And you know, like we met, we sat together, you know, at tables and we we're able to talk and share stories and stuff. Yeah, um, it's kind of hard to do that sometime on a like a zoom based call. But you also get the opportunity of like some people could never afford to go to Vegas and see, you know, like right. the big camera show or whatever. Um, but they could watch it, they'll pay some money to watch it. So increasing your audience that way, I think and they're going to need people to run, you know, both the live event and the remote uh the remote stuff. So uh, I think there's really an opportunity. And then, you know, even on top of that, after those are events are done, they, most companies now are seeing the value of repurposing and splitting up those events. And they're going to need editors and people who understand the skill set of how to tell a story in video in a concise way. They're going to need that for people to take that content that's been produced and, and repurpose it. Mm, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of room there. It's so interesting. I mean, I, I, I after that event that we were at, I, I just started thinking about, like, what would it look like for us to actually produce a show for somebody? Like, we, we haven't, like, we'll, we'll get hired to, you know, create content for people and mm -hmm. then for them to use it, like, however they want. But nobody's ever really hired us for, like, hey, we want to do a show. And we've partnered with course creators. Uh, and, you know, in that model, right. we, we get a shared revenue uh, with with the sales, uh, but we're doing a lot of the marketing pieces. But that for us has been so rewarding because we shoot the video, we do the stuff, and then it sits on this digital shelf, and like we make sales every day, and we get a, a portion of that profit. And in this same kind of way, like all, all I'm thinking about now is like, wow, with a couple of our course creator partners, they could probably have some kind of an Amazon show or a, you know a right. live show where they're doing some of this stuff. Susan, who we work with, uh, you know, she's got tools that she uses for florist stuff, um, you know, and all of that stuff. And we were talking about my wife mm -hmm. and her yeah, paintings yeah. and same thing, like, you know, for her to just uh, have a setup and be painting and like have her, here's their stuff. But as video people, people that really know good lighting, good audio, good setup, maybe even have a studio, right. there's a huge advantage to oh, yeah. to be able to say like, hey, you know, we could host your show, we could produce your show, and like let's let's figure out uh, some kind of a shared revenue uh, that 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 works. And so many people don't want to have like if you have like what we have, like I can sit down at any time, everything's set up, I can turn on my lights and go. Most most people don't have that. And so if you're a video creator or an editor or whatever, uh, you have probably that setup. And that is, we kind of like, oh, I never thought, you know, we just kind of, that's how everybody we know in our circles, they have a setup, they have a backdrop and they can just go. We're weird. Right. Most people don't have that <laughs> right. stuff, you know, they don't. My wife's always like, you're weird. Most people don't talk like you. So, right. um, right being able to like really dive into that and like listen you could you could rent out your studio and say hey I've set it up I'll press record for you you come in and record it and I'll you know I'll give it to you and I'll edit it up for x amount of money or whatever and do that so that's what I've been using cuz I'm already here with all this stuff making a video on you know my Hi PR40 and uploading it to Amazon and every time somebody watches it and buys one I make money off of that that's a no brainer yeah. for me cuz I'm already set up for it right you know and so I it's a it is, if you are a um, video creator or, you know, editor or whatever, it is a really lucrative side hustle that, you know, 
it sounds too good to be true, but I have been playing with it, and it's just pretty amazing. And that's why, you know, I've been t- Ryan's been bug- bugging me all the time trying to, you know, he's get, get on it too, because it's it really is We're just close. amazing. Uh, I was trying to task my family with creating a bunch of videos that we could upload this yeah. weekend, but, uh, you know, we just got back from vacation. Everybody's tired. I'm like, come on, you guys, let's do this. <laughs> um, I, I'm also, I'm so good. I remember early on in my business, and I, I would imagine you, maybe you were the same, but when I was making, like, hardly any money at this, uh, and, but I wanted new gear, I kind of always had to explain myself to my wife and say, like, well, yeah, no, I really need this, you know, new lens. And she's well, like, what? Like, really? A $2,000? Like, what are you talking about? So always trying to justify purchases, but I know there are a lot of people that would love to have a studio space, mm-hmm. their own space, right? They work at home. And I think there is something to what we're talking about here that <laughs> I don't want to get anybody in trouble, you know, whatever relationships you're in. Um, but, you know, this week we rented our studio out for two days. Uh, it's 800 bucks for a full day and uh, super easy. We open the door like they, it's the, the way the studio is set up. There's a separate door here. They can come in the back door here. They can just do all their stuff here. There's restrooms, all the, all the things that they need. And nobody nobody bugged us except for when their camera did fall off of their tripod. And they did ask if we had a camera that they could borrow oh, or rent. No. And we did rent out a camera. Yeah, it was not good. Um, fortunately, well, no, I think their lens was busted too. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it, that's, a, that's an aside. So we made money on renting the space. Then we actually made a little bit of money on the camera rentals. But then we also have a podcast room where people can come and rent the podcast room. We only we probably rent that out maybe once every mm-hmm. other month. An agency will come in, and but but still, it's like we're trying to maximize on the space that it's already set set up. It's already here. The gear's here. It it doesn't take much effort for us, and to be able to offer those kinds of things to say like, man, if you're going to, if you're the only one who's going to use your studio, it's, it's harder to justify. But if there are ways that you can, you know, just say like, man, we could create a show once a week and the stuff is already here. And it's just like the flick of a couple of buttons. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to say, okay, like I, I, I didn't, I couldn't justify getting a studio space before, right. but if I'm able to make some money, as a result, then definitely worth considering. Yeah, and on that same line, and I talked about this a little bit today when we were on my show talking about uh, brand deals, is I wish I would have asked for stuff earlier. We all think that mm-hmm. we need to wait till we have X amount of followers, we have this much money in the bank, or we have this big, or we have this great office, like you were saying. We're like, well, I want to have, I'll do it when I get an office like Ryan. You don't have to wait. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. wish I would have asked before because brands yeah. want to know, like, I was telling Ryan before the show, like, I just got everything Heil probably has in their catalog delivered yesterday. And then Sure sent me something today. And it's gear that they want me to talk about because of Amazon Live and that I can go there. So you've got to think about how you can add value to those brands and then just ask. Like, my ask for this, I was like, listen, Prime Day is coming up. I'm going to do a lot of lives. I would love, I love your, your stuff. I would love to talk about them. That's it. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, because we had had relationships before, I, I talked to at PodFest where uh, we were at, or at, at a couple weeks ago, and um, I, I saw Heil at the booth, and I was just talking with him. And so, I mean, it's just that kind of stuff is don't be scared mm-hmm. to ask because they could just say no, and it's that they don't, it's not, like, not going to be mad at you. You know, they'll just say, no, I, I can't do that right now. Fine, move on. Yeah. I wish I would have known that a lot earlier. Uh, I would love to shift gear. So yeah. we're talking about the Heil PR40. This is the microphone that I've been using since I started podcasting. Um, boy, is this like the <laughs> coolest mic. I remember listening to like the first episode. I'm like, oh my gosh, this sounds like, I just sound like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's just the mm-hmm. quality of the microphone. Um, I've, for our production company, I have launched two different podcasts. <clears throat> and the reason why I started them was, I wanted to be able to get in the room with people that I wouldn't normally have an opportunity or an excuse to meet with, have coffee with, take out to lunch. <clears throat> so both shows were very successful at that. Like, I I mean, I it was able to interview some incredibly successful people, people that if I just emailed them or went to their office, they'd be like, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have time. But podcasting, uh, especially podcasts with not just audio but with right. option for video people know 
that, man, this stuff can be repurposed. And we see it you know, in reels. We see it in shorts and just all over the place. TikTok, all this content that can be created from a video podcast can actually be very, 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 very valuable. I didn't mean to say four very. It's that valuable. To correct my. <laughs> it's that. But I will say. I don't do either of those shows anymore. <clears throat> and part of that was uh, strategy. I, di- I didn't have the right strategy ahead of time. Really, I, it was like, oh, this would be great. I can meet people and then hopefully they'll hire me to, uh, you know, to do some video stuff because they'll just like me and it's I'm getting an opportunity. Well, I wasn't very good at like creating any type of sales, anything. It was just like, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the link. See you later. Uh, I didn't know where to take the conversation from, from there. So I think, you know, we're talking about, we're kind of having some whisperings and rumblings about starting a YouTube channel that might be, you know, sort of like a podcast where we will have some guests, uh, but the intention and the strategy behind it will be much different than what we did with our first two shows where it was really just an excuse for me to be able to create great content, but also right. be able to to meet, you know, uh, people that I liked and respected. And man, if they hired me to do video, that would be really, really cool. In your world, podcasting, uh, you, I mean, you're doing video podcasts now, mm-hmm. right? You're producing these shows. Um, is Is this... Is this medium, is it still, I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of it just because I think it can be repurposed oh, yeah. and used in a lot of different ways. But are you sort of seeing that too? Or is there part of you that's like you're, you're thinking of the next thing like, oh, man, I, I'm not sure we're not getting as many downloads as we were and, and it might not be working like it once was. Like what are, what are your so, thoughts So, I mean, there's there? more podcasts than when I first started for sure. But the thing is, is I think it's still most podcasts end after the seventh episode. So contis- consistency is key, oh. even though, you know, you just told me – quit two of them but other than that ignore that but <laughs> but you're doing what now the the thing that i was gonna bring up is that i think the video i've always done video for my podcast from the very beginning i never have done oh wow i've never done one one because i saw the value of video and i got so much yeah. you know repurposing out of it because some people just want to listen to a podcast they don't want to listen to they don't want to watch a video. Some people yeah. would rather watch a right. video and see every expression on your face. And if you bring in great guests, that's a great way too. Uh, so I've always done that. You know, the downside of um, going – and I did another thing on top of that. I mean, you're going you, – you have video and audio, but I would do it live. So I've always done it live at the same yeah. time yeah. because I wanted that spontaneity and bring in questions mm-hmm. from my, my community. Um, yep. So I always have found a lot of value for that. Uh, and I think that like shop, I mean Spotify and YouTube. YouTube even just last week came out from their actual office. They made a video talking about how podcasters can benefit from their platform because they're really going to go all in on podcasting, you know, video podcasts and all that stuff because they they don't want Spotify to get ahead of them. So video podcasting, I think, is it's already here, but it's going to go even to the next level. Um, you're going to see a lot more, you know, there's subscription based podcasts. Now I think there's going to be a lot more video uh, based podcasts. Um, YouTube, I have a, th- a feeling is going to have some search capabilities because I, there's a great uh, newsletter. If you aren't reading it, I think it's called share of ear. It's by Tom Webster. Uh, he's with Edison research where he was. And I think behind, so Apple podcast discoverability is number one. And then I think, Spotify is right there on their heels. Um, and then YouTube oh, is wow. right behind that. And I was like, really? People just go and listen to podcasts on YouTube and they, that's where they discover them. And they'll just put them in the background. And, and even those ones that you've seen, they just have a static image and have the podcast behind them. People are listening to those because yeah. that's where the young, the youngins are getting their content. So uh, I don't see it going away anytime soon. I just think there's going to be more capability baked in. Yeah, that's crazy. That's good news. I mean, honestly, when I think about like even my own, our, the show, my show, we get a we get a decent amount of monthly downloads. But then, like, you go okay, to YouTube sort of, and yeah, you look at our video stats, and they're like embarrassing. They're it's like so. So low. I so because I do guys podcast too, and I'm trying to get him to go to YouTube as well because of the searchability. Yeah. Um, but I look at like uh, Tim Ferriss, who is a huge podcaster. He's been uploading his full versions, but then also doing clips. 
So he's like okay. not only just doing his full version on there, but he's also doing clips in there, and they do really, really well. Of course, I mean it's Tim Ferriss, but I mean, uh, you could do the same thing. Is the thing you could use some of those models and see what they're doing, and like, okay, there must be a value that that's coming from that. I might want to try clipping it up and putting the full episode out there as well. Yeah, I think uh, one thought that I had is is. As we all are, are trying to figure out, like, what's the magic bullet in getting our video production business out there so people can see it and know that we exist and hire us. And so a lot of us, I think, resort to we have our website and then the next most important thing would be like our show reel or our demo reel. Uh, or some people might say, like, I don't need a website. Uh, I just need Instagram mm -hmm. and I need to put all my cool stuff there. I, I'm... I was telling you before the show, I'm starting to outline my next episode where I'm going to talk more specifically just about social media in general. <clears throat> Some of my takeaways from the, from the event that we were at. And I, I just, I don't want to add more stress and chaos and busy work and things to my life that were, I know consistency is so important mm -hmm. in this, but I also, I, I, I don't see a lot of other people in similar spaces that are outside of like the wedding mm -hmm. industry that has a very focused niche of like what they're going for. Corporate and commercial filmmaking is like, it's so stinking broad. And, <clears throat> you know, I, we used to post all the videos that we were doing for our clients, similar to like when we were filming right. weddings you know we post these videos and we get all these views and then we started you know we we're sharing oh here's the piece that we did for u of m or here's the piece that we did with jeep or here's the piece that we did for disney and like we we get like no views <laughs> get like 17 views and i just realized you know after a long time of like just trying really hard to create something that was gonna you know be viral or or you know to create a blog post that people were just gonna be like, this is the best thing ever but at the end of the day like Corporate clients don't really care about other corporate videos until, like, they have a very specific need. And then at that point, they want to see something that, you know, is going to be along mm -hmm. those lines. And so since a lot of businesses need, you know, a bunch of different things, like somebody might need a live video, somebody might need a produced show, somebody might need a brand film, somebody might need a, a explainer video, somebody might need an interview. You know, it's just like there's just so many things. So I say all that to say – you know, when it came to social, when it has come to social media for us, there's just, there, there are so many, right. Where so many places to go, so many platforms, so many things to do, so many things to post. I was going to say something. No, I was going to feel free. Uh, so here's, here's what, um, if I was doing your business now, which I'm not, it's, it's totally different, but you, you have to look at your audience and, and who you're trying to serve because number one, you're not going to get any clients probably from TikTok. Nobody there has budget to probably buy your services. Uh, the same thing, you know, Facebook, you know, probably not. Instagram Reels even, are they really there to buy a corporate video? Um, now, LinkedIn, that's where I think that I would, would double down because, like, LinkedIn Live has done really, really well for me. Um, and going there and, and being able to answer questions and building a community in LinkedIn where people are actually starting, they have budget and there's, you make connections with, you know, like even Disney, like Imagineers. And I mean, there's some really cool people on LinkedIn that yeah. you can connect with. And there's even tools that I think could really play into like uh, filmmakers and, and like, even if you turn on creator mode now, if you have, it's only on your, um, on your phone, if you, somebody hovers over and you've probably seen that if you hover over somebody's face it'll it'll pop up a video and they'll start talking like hey i do this this and this. that's perfect yep. i think for for video creators mm. you can only do it on mobile but you could even offer that service like hey i know how to do this for you come to my my studio and i'll film one that's unlike any of the other ones that you have seen we'll upload it to your phone and it'll be done i mean i would really because the people who are buying and having budget for creating video and corporate videos they're going to be on linkedin First of all, they're not going to be on TikTok. They're not going to be on Instagram unless they just happen to browse by and see that you did a Jeep commercial. But they will see that, hey, because you can post like the cool stuff you've done in your bio and LinkedIn. They might say, oh, filmmaker, and scroll down and like, oh, 
that's really good. We need that. We have, we don't have Jeep as a client, but we have, you know, Tesla Cybertruck. That would be a great thing for that, you know, whatever. So, I mean, that's where I think people are discovering people who really can make, <laughs> have money and can buy your services. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, that, that makes total sense. And what I'm trying to convey is I know there are people that are getting right business on Instagram and, you know, and just wherever, just all the places. I agree. I think LinkedIn is the smartest place to be because for me, I, I want to be as efficient as possible. Right. If I'm going to spend time and energy and money on marketing what I do, I know that I can't do all the platforms. So let me start with one and let me try to figure out like where are the people that I know <laughs> – are in business on there because of business right. aren't there because Bored. they're right, you know right. trying to laugh or trying to you know whatever um and sure i want to kind of bring some of that you know laughing and stuff and did you see that the, the new oh, yeah, like yeah. yeah. you can do like a laughing right like finally yes. i mean finally <clears throat> it's it's but are uh, they laughing I mean, with you or at that you that's my problem known. that's what i yeah probably <laughs> at me but i don't even give a care <clears throat> so I, my suggestion is select a platform like LinkedIn, but then having a video pocket. Like I love, I love the idea of going live. I, I just, I made a note. I'm like, I got to take this show live. I've done it maybe twice in its existence. And I'm like, it's way more fun and be able to field questions, all that stuff. But to create a show, some kind of a podcast where you're, you're, kind of getting to the heart of like, what is it that you do it as a business? Like what's your superpower in your business? And to, I mean, you don't even have to like, you don't have to talk. If you can bring on other experts and other people, get their audience, you know, because I'm sure if I have, if I go live and I have you on the show, like somewhere or somehow it's going to pop up in your people's feed that you're Well, there's even technology me, right? now. So, uh, cause I'm, I'm all, that's the way I've always done it is because one, it gives me somebody to hide behind, and if something happens, I can duck behind, you know, and get things and move things. And <laughs> and the other thing with the technology now, um, I use a, th a platform that lets me go everywhere at once. It's called Restream. You know, I use Ecamm and then go Restream sends it out everywhere. But I can send a link to you. Let's say you're on my show, which you're going to be on my show. I'll send you a Restream link. You can connect all your socials. And I don't have any of your passwords. I don't have any of that stuff. And then you come on, and if and we go live, it goes live to all your channels, and I can pull up comments from your people. It just doesn't. I mean, and so oh, wow. I use it a lot to steal. I'm using air quotes. Mm. Um, other people's audience. Yeah, yeah. So if I get a good YouTuber on, and they happen to link their YouTube channel, man, I my subscriber count shoots up. And so it's a great way to borrow people's audiences if you're very very strategic about it. Mm. Now. You know, they won't. You don't say you have to connect to be on my show. You just most of them do, um, right, right, but right. that's a way. Because I mean, I did the whole thing. Like, here's some links, and here's here's your graphic for your show. You can post on your stuff, and <laughs> nobody ever does that, really. I mean, if you're nice, you'll get somebody. You'll do it a couple times, but it was so much work. This is the easy way that you say, here's a link, click on it, put whatever, whatever social you want. You can do your own LinkedIn, my, you know, and it, it's amazing. So you being strategic about how you're sharing and what your audience is, I think is key if you're talking about social media. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I did the same thing. Like, you know, I was having all these people on my podcast and I was like, oh, they're going to share me with their audience. And the people I was having on the show, like they're on like a right. hundred shows a day. So like, they're not going to share my show, but you know, yeah. going live, like yeah. there's a, there's a little bit better chance. And, and even if they don't share, I'm still wondering if like, I'm tagging you, if somehow it populates. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't think it does. Feed, I mean, it depends maybe, on what platform, but, not. um, yeah, yeah it, it's still, even though even having them on, it lets you, you still, I mean, you still would able, that's what, even before this technology rolled out, it still lets you gave you some panache and like some, you know, you know, Oh, I've got yeah, you know, right. this person on my show. And, People come to watch your show because that person's on that show, not because of you. Right, right, right. Yeah. So long, long story longer. My suggestion, if you're you're kind of in a spot where you're like, man, I don't know, like what, where I should be spending my time. I'm spending time in all the socials. Um, maybe you don't, you're like, I don't even really want a show. You don't. I don't think that you even need to dub it a show. Like to be able to hop on with somebody else, have some questions, try to create value for the audience, talk about story, talk about the importance of, you know, 
high quality video or like whatever whatever your shtick is, but getting those opportunities and then asking other people like, hey, well, what do you think about video and how has it helped you in your business and those kinds of things. To to record that, to get audio, video, and then in your case, to go live one more layer. Well, that's just like that's that's a I think an exponential. And here's why I one. think that it's kind of the secret sauce that I think, especially if you take this show and do it live is because you start yeah. building community and podcasts and are, are just, yeah. it's notoriously hard to build a community unless you get a huge amount and you start to use like, you know, a, vod, what, a Voxer to bring in audio and you can answer questions and stuff. It's just, but if you yeah. could do that live on your show and you can do the, the, the state of show or the show flow that has people, um, the run of show that has people like, okay, we're going to take a break, ask questions, you know, then we'll go back onto the interview. You can do it that way. But the community and doing it at the same time each week, which is a pain in the butt. Mm. But yeah. people yeah, show, yeah, yeah. I have people who have shown up almost for two years every Friday, and I know them by name. And, you, and oh they know gosh. me, and they love being on the show. They love <laughs> me to call them out. I mean, you can't buy that. And those people know people that know people that know people, yeah. and, and you can get jobs from that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Yeah, and so – all, all of this, again, like I'm, right. I'm talking about right. working smarter, not harder, having a video podcast and going, going live. If, if you have the confidence to do that, like do that for sure. But then you've got, now you've got this content that you can cut up, make shorter pieces, post on LinkedIn, post, you know, repurpose other places. Um, but the, I, I just think that that's the smartest thing to do instead of like trying to think okay i'm going to post this video that we just wrapped and if it, now i will say that our behind the scenes sure. stuff yeah. like that stuff is right. crazy people love watching that looking versus like the final product it's like oh yeah we'll watch like a few seconds yeah it looks like a good piece uh but oh cool to like see the team and see them in action see the you know how the setups are and all that stuff like that's just way cooler so moral of the story is podcasting podcasting's not dead uh, it's been revived like a it, couple. They always of times. say this is like the year of past, podcasting, you know, and I'm like, they've said that years. for the last ten years. <laughs> <laughs> this is the year of podcast. I'm like, okay. So, I know, but I, so uh, let me just tell like my sequence because this may help people out because they because this can this can sound Give us your overwhelming. Sequence, so I do my live show. As soon as I'm done, I yes. upload it to Descript, and I think you've talked about Descript before in your show. Everything for me starts with a transcript. Yes. Usually a good question to answer is the perfect amount of time. Two minutes, 20 seconds is Twitter, and I use all my clips is what I do because it'll fit, and I can just make one clip, and I can use it multiple places. So when you highlight it in Descript, it tells you exactly how long it is. I export that out as a clip from Descript. It already has the subtitles. I have my team take it and do it, but you can actually just drop it right into a Premiere, and it takes the subtitles, and you don't have to upload it, and it just makes it for you, and you export it out, and you're done. I take all those clips. Um, for all the different platforms, I use a, uh, a service called Agora Pulse, which is a social listening and scheduling tool. And I upload that to go out and there's a whole queue. I have probably a, almost 200 clips that just constantly rotate um, from my show um, to those all, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and it continuously just rotates. So I'm always top of mind and I usually get five or six clips out of each show and that's, and then I have the transcript that I can use for my blog post and where I embed the podcast and the video. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's like one of the most powerful tools. Uh, with uh, Riverside, which is yeah. what we use, yeah. we've been using for months and months, uh, now they've got a, a plug-in with Descript where right. I can export right from here, right into Descript, get the transcripts, pull the clips. It's changed uh, it is everything. Like, it's insane. I, I just cannot believe how easy it is to take something like this and create content and and then just like do this and then and, like, yeah and, and you then, can make and, and now inside of write into script you can make audiograms you don't have to take it to another platform mm -hmm. to make those you can drop them right in there have, they have the waveforms and all the stuff you can make your audiograms and so uh, yeah it's just it's so, <laughs> I wish I had this five years ago yeah yeah it's amazing yeah I mean the thing is like when you're a solopreneur when you're a freelancer when you're by yourself doing this work. You can't do all the things. You can't be in all the places. You can't be engaging in conversations on, you know, in Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and all these. You just can't do it. Plus, try to sell, like have sales calls, right. shoot the videos, edit the videos, plan the next video, try to find some time to take a break. Like you can't do all the things. So uh, 
work smarter, not harder. <laughs> I just said that uh, a bazillion times. But unless you have a team that can do all these things for you, like you have to be very smart and very intentional. Uh, you have to protect your time and you have to do the activities in your business that are going to get you the biggest result instead of like just feeling like well my competition like they keep posting on instagram their stories are so good and uh, i got to keep up with them don't believe that don't do that the next episode that i'm going to do i'm going to talk about i built a seven figure video production business with the most embarrassing social media like thing right. i don't even know like what it's it's like discombobulated it's not there's no there's no rhythm there's no consistency we're not in hardly any of the places that's not how i built this business now if we were to focus maybe a percentage of our time and energy and put some money to a specific strategy then we would probably see some traction but until then we're just going to like not feel like we have to be, you know, and sure, I, I see other production companies, and I see some of the stuff they do. I'm like, man, <laughs> I wish I could do that, right? But that's like, yeah, you, you got to quit comparing anybody. yourself to um, other people. What is it? John Acuff is one of my favorite authors says, oh, yeah. um, you know, uh, um, what is it? 80% per, 80, 80, what is it? No, I can't even remember it. So cut this part out. Well, somebody says, uh, you can't compare your beginning to someone right. else's middle or something like that, right? Um, what is it? 80%? Uh, this is what I'm completed. clipping out here. Yeah. I'm, I'm putting... <laughs> so never mind. I won't even say it. I used to, I say it in my speech all the time. I can't remember. Oh, 80% p- perfect and shared with our world always changes more live than, uh, lives than 100% perfect and stuck in your head. Mm, say that one more time. I think that's just a really good point yeah. to drive home. 80% perfect and shared with the world always changes more lives than 100% perfect and stuck in your head. Mm, dude. Yes, a million percent. As someone who's struggled with uh, perfe- in, or perfectionism, I can't even say the word. I can't even say it perfect. Jeez. And imposter syndrome, like right. those two things together oh, for man. me. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot, and, and it's – my father-in-law asked me recently, like, what's your biggest regret in your, in your business? And, um, I was going to say marrying your daughter. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. It's like one of the best decisions. That is the best decision I ever made. Um, it's, uh, just not, not launching, not like being afraid to, that people were going to look at what I was doing and were going to laugh or like judge me or like whatever. Um, but so many things stayed up in here. Um, because I was afraid of like putting some out that was only 80% good. And it's like, Oh, I could have, I could have helped so many more people and had such a bigger impact. And I, I don't feel, you know, I'm, 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 I'm okay with right. like right. that. If, if I could go back, I would change that. But, um, but outside of that, like, you know, now I'm, I'm, my new anthem is like, I'm not doing that. Like I'm, you know, momentum is messy, you know, well, John Acuff there, there you for you. Um, and it's fine. Like I, I, I'm realizing more and more that uh, doing the thing is so much, so much better than not. And and if it doesn't work, like who cares? I'm I'll yeah. try it. And I'll try to get it to 100. percent You know. But uh, there, uh, the longer I've been in this business, the more I've found that almost everybody I know has struggled with imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Almost everybody. And if they say they haven't, they're lying. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. If I feel so. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was fun. You know, I asked that question uh, at my talk at social media week Mm -hmm. and uh it it, like almost everybody's hand went up and i'm like okay i'm not not alone you know this is uh, you're not alone right and feeling that uh jeff dude this is so good um how can people find you follow you keep up with (laughs) all the things that you got going on so i'm jeff c pretty much everywhere and that's spelled j-e-f-f s is in sam i-e-h that's i before e especially in c and uh i do a live show every week at socialmedianewslive.com all over on the social. So I'd love to connect. And I also have, uh, you know, and, and Ryan and I have been talking about this, and this is something, this is another way of you guys may want to think about, you know, connecting and building community in your businesses using Volley. And so there's a, for socialmedianewslive.com forward slash chat, that takes you to a Volley channel where we just talk and like you ask questions. And sometimes I, I can actually download your questions and put them in the show. And so, I'm all about community because I think that also is what yeah. people really, really want now. Yeah. 
I love that. Yeah. And I've appreciated uh, just even our short relationship, uh, how uh, intentional you've been uh, with me and helpful. And uh, so super, super thankful that our paths have crossed. Uh, thanks for having this chat What's your uh, name with again? me today. I'm sh- uh, <laughs> 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 oh, dude. Uh, but seriously, thank you from the bottom of my heart being able to hop on today and uh, looking forward to many more chats just like this later on. Sounds good, brother. Thank you. All right, friend. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode with Jeff. I obviously had a super fun time chatting with him. He is a super, he's, he is so stinking funny. I laughed during his entire presentation. Uh, just a super guy, really, really smart, super sharp. Um, so I would love to hear if you had any big takeaways from this episode. So if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section, uh, or you can just email me directly, ryan at studiosherpas.com. Uh, if you're looking for an in-person event, a place to hang out and meet other filmmakers, I'm hosting the Onward Summit that's happening at our production studio in Lake Orion, Michigan, uh, from October 2nd through October 5th. So it's a Sunday through a Wednesday. We'd love to have you come out. Uh, I've got some very special guests, uh, incredibly gifted filmmakers and award-winning uh, filmmakers that are doing big things in this world uh, of filmmaking. And uh, they're going to be presenting as well uh, as some others. So come hang out. You can find out all about the Onward Summit if you go to studiosherpas.com slash onward. That's it, my friend. I hope you are doing amazing, and I hope to hear from you soon. I hope to see you soon. Uh, Until then, I'll see you on next week's episode. Bye for now.